Don't call it a comeback. I've had glasses for years. Okay, so in 1938, Orson Welles shocked the nation with his radio play, War of the Worlds. Radio, for all you whippersnappers out there, was a type of uh, live entertainment that didn't have images, it only had sound. It was kind of like a podcast over the air. It was a whole thing. Anyway, in this radio drama, it was presented sort of like a news broadcast, and it tricked a lot of people into thinking that we were actually being invaded by an alien species. A plague of aliens, if you will. It scared people so much that there were reports of people flooding police stations begging for gas masks in order to save them. Apparently the, the highways out of New Jersey were completely jammed up with people trying to escape. And somewhere in Nebraska, apparently a woman ran into a church and yelled, the end of the world is here, go home and be with your families. Orson Welles, the original troll. Luckily, they didn't have any reason to fear because in War of the Worlds, spoiler alert, the aliens were killed off by our microbes. Which, not to go on a tangent, that's always bugged me because how did these super advanced aliens not know about microbes? We figured that shit out a hundred years ago. Oh my god, don't get me started on the movie signs. An alien race, the hyper-intelligence so much further beyond where we are can travel all the way across the galaxy to land on a planet that's 80% water when their only weakness is water. Come on, Shyamalan! Anyway, while microbes are apparently our only defense against killer aliens, they can also be our biggest enemy. On Monday, I did a video about overpopulation and whether or not Thanos from Avengers Infinity War was right in what he wanted to do. And in it, I talked about the Black Death and how that's one of the only times in human history where our population actually went down worldwide. But that was not the only plague in history. In fact, some were even worse. Just like in War of the Worlds, the most potent killer on Earth are our smallest organisms. Might be the only thing that movie got right. So this video is about the top five plagues in human history, and it got a little bit um, complicated to put this list together because there are some diseases that have wiped out tons of people throughout history, but never at one time. And then there were other diseases that only popped up once, but wiped out a big percentage of the world in the process. And then there are some that popped up over and over again in plagues in various places throughout the world. So I tried to kind of shoot the needle on this one and do a little bit of both. Tell me what you think. Number five, HIV. HIV stands for the Human Immunodeficiency Virus. And a lot of times this gets confused with AIDS. HIV and AIDS are sort of related, but AIDS is actually more of a collection of symptoms that you get from HIV. AIDS standing for Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome. And what sets this worldwide plague apart from all the others on our list is it still happening right now? AIDS was first identified in 1981, although the origination of the disease went back a decade or two before that, and since then, it's killed nearly 35 million people around the world. HIV is just a bastard of a virus that does all kinds of weird things. It first hits you almost like the flu. You get it after you've been exposed a couple of weeks afterwards. You get flu-like symptoms that just kind of passes. Most people don't think anything of it. Some people don't get any symptoms at all. But it's the second stage of HIV that makes it especially awful because it's completely asymptomatic. You carry HIV for anywhere from 10 to 15 years with no symptoms whatsoever, and most people don't even know it. But what's going on underneath is it's slowly attacking the immune system, taking it down piece by piece by piece for a long period of time until eventually you hit stage three. And stage three is when your immune system is just so vulnerable and weakened because of years and years of attacks underneath the surface that you basically are prone to any kind of crazy infection. They call them opportunistic infections. People in this stage experience extreme weight loss. They have chronic coughing that doesn't ever go away. They have lung infections, skin infections pop up quite a bit. Sometimes tuberculosis can break out. And this is what we call AIDS, full-blown AIDS. And eventually it's one of those opportunistic infections that actually kills the person. Now one of the real tragedies about HIV is that because it was sexually transmitted and because it was mostly in the gay community in the early days, it wasn't really paid enough attention to until it really got out of control. Eventually a string of high profile celebrity cases popped up like Rock Hudson, Freddie Mercury, and Anthony Perkins. These people all died and brought a lot of attention to it. And then there are these tragic stories of people who acquired it from getting a blood transfusion because they didn't test for these things in the early days. People like Ryan White, uh, Arthur Ashe, and Isaac Asimov even died of this. The arrival of AIDS set off a total panic around sex. Safe sex, the word safe sex became a household term. And of course this happened right about the time that I was 
finally old enough to have sex and sex became basically Russian roulette. It really did affect my entire generation and the way we looked at promiscuity and intimate relationships. Now luckily today, HIV isn't the immediate death sentence that it used to be. There's a certain cocktail of drugs that you can take or various different combinations of drugs that can usually keep it under control and you can live a, a relatively long life. Regular screenings and sex education has helped to manage the disease in most of the world, but it remains a problem in Africa where over 36.7 million people currently have the disease. So unfortunately, this is still very much a plague we're right in the middle of. Number four, malaria. I hate mosquitoes. While there's never been a specific plague of malaria that we can point to, this one makes the list just off of sheer numbers. In 2015, more than 212 million people contracted malaria, and that's actually down 29% from 2010. But thanks to modern medicine, only about half a million died. That's still a lot, but a lot less than 212 million. But before modern medicine, it was not a good time. Some have actually estimated that malaria has killed off half of all people who have ever lived. That's a pretty hard claim to verify, but it is very prevalent in places where we kind of evolved out of in the early days of our species. In fact, the bacteria that causes malaria was found in a mosquito that was trapped in amber over 30 million years ago. Yeah, just like Jurassic Park. They found dinosaur blood and malaria. Malaria is, of course, spread by mosquitoes, more specifically the species Anopheles, and even more specifically, only the female of the species. Now, it's actually not caused by a bacteria or virus. It's actually caused by a single cell organism called a plasmodium that multiplies inside of our red blood cells. And because this is transmitted by mosquitoes, this is what's known as a vector-borne illness. So if you're unlucky enough to have the wrong mosquito bite you, in about a week or so, you can experience things like severe abdominal pain, nausea, diarrhea, and vomiting. You know, all those nice little nasties. You can also get extreme fatigue and low blood pressure that can actually cause you to faint, say, if you stand up or move too fast. This is all from the anemia that sets in after having all this red blood cells taken out of your system. This anemia weakens the body, weakens the immune system, makes you prone to infections, and can cause blood clots that can form in your brain, which, as I'm sure you can imagine, not good. So if you're ever traveling in uh, tropical areas like uh, Africa, Central or South America, or the Middle East, and start to come down with some of these symptoms, see a doctor immediately. So while billions have been poured into fighting this disease from foundations like the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and a lot of progress has been made in terms of helping people to survive it, it still remains a threat to nearly half of the people on the planet that live in these areas. And for now anyway, there's no vaccine. There's a mosquito in here right now. Number three, bubonic plague. This is what everybody thinks of when you say the word plague. I mean, it's, it's right there in the name. It's a bacterium called Yersinia pestis that's actually transmitted by fleas. And gee, I wonder why they called it pestis. This is the disease that caused the Black Death, but it also popped up various times throughout history, all the way up into the 20th century. The first recorded instance of this plague was the Plague of Justinian in the year 541 to 542. This killed 25 million people and then 50 million after recurrences that popped up in the centuries following that. It wound up wiping out 13% of the entire world population. So one of my little pet peeves is when people use the word decimate the wrong way. People say they got decimated as if it just wiped out everything, but the word decimated actually means to reduce by 10%. So in the case of the Plague of Justinian, yeah, it literally decimated the planet. The Black Death occurred between 1347 and 1351. It only lasted four years, but it killed nearly 200 million people, or 30 to 60% of the population of Europe. I could do, and many have done, an entire video on the Black Death. It is absolutely fascinating, and it changed the world in ways that we're still feeling today. The Plague of London occurred between 1665 and 1666, and while it was contained just in London, it killed a quarter of the population. So just imagine one out of every four people you know just dying in one year. And the third plague pandemic hit in 1855 in China and India, and it lasted up until, wait for it, 1959. And in the process, it killed over 12 million people. Now, if you got the bubonic plague, uh, one of the first things you would notice, aside from feeling sick, is that your lymph nodes would swell up to the size of chicken eggs. These are known as buboes, hence the name bubonic. And from there, things get really fun because then your skin breaks out in fluid-filled cysts and boils all over your body. And your extremities, like your fingers, turn black from necrosis. This, hence the word black and black death. And then after a few days, you die. 
hence the word death. The Black Death left an indelible mark on Europe, everything from religious upheavals to increases in innovation and productivity because there were fewer people to do the work, they had to get creative and use machinery to find ways to do the work that used to be done by a whole bunch of people. Luckily the bubonic plague is all but wiped out today with fewer than 200 cases a year popping up randomly around the world and those are actually treated with strong antibiotics so deaths from bubonic plague is actually quite rare. Number two, the Spanish flu of 1918. So the influenza virus, chances are you've had it, we've all had it at some point in our lives. It's so common that there's a flu season every year and it's not uncommon for people to die from the flu. Usually it's older people or younger people or people with compromised immune systems. But the flu pandemic of 1918, that was a whole different animal. This particular strain of flu found its way around the world and infected 500 million people, killing over 100 million people in one year. This is considered one of the worst disasters in human history. But the reason you might not have heard much about it is because it took place during World War I, one of the other biggest disasters in human history. Yeah, 1918. Not a great year. Now it's not actually known where this originated from. It's called the Spanish flu, so a lot of people think that it came from Spain, but the reason it was called Spanish flu was because again, World War I was going on and the news reporters and organizations didn't want to uh, lower morale by talking about this horrible flu that was going around. So it kind of got censored in most of the reporting from around the world, but Spain, which was neutral in World War I, reported on it quite a bit. So therefore, it looked like Spain was hardest hit by it, but it was actually not any more hit than anybody else. Unluckily for them, the, the name stuck. But the weird thing about this particular strain of flu is like I said before, most flus kill older, younger people, immunocompromised people. This one actually mostly killed healthy young people. And it's thought because it was, it caused a cytokine storm in your immune system. So if you had a strong immune system, it actually turned that immune system against your body. So the stronger your immune system, the more likely it was to kill you. Now this is sometimes called the forgotten pandemic because it, again, took place during World War I. That's where everybody's attention was focused. But in terms of sheer numbers, the number of people it killed in such a short amount of time is absolutely mind blowing. It killed more people in a shorter amount of time than any other disease in human history. And number one, smallpox. Smallpox sucked. Smallpox is caused by the variola virus and it's been around really since the beginning of our species and it's just been killing the shit out of people all the way through. It has killed, estimated, over 500 million people. If you get smallpox, there's a one in three chance that you're gonna die. One of the first recorded plagues was the plague of Athens in 430 BC and this was thought to be caused by the smallpox virus. It's also thought to be responsible for the Antonine Plague during uh, 165 to 180 AD, which killed over seven million people. It ravaged Europe all the way up into the second millennium, but it was when Europeans landed in the Americas that it really got its groove on. In the centuries after Europeans landed in the Americas, nearly 90% of Native American populations were wiped out by not only smallpox, but typhoid and cholera and tuberculosis as well. By the way, I'm gonna link to a video right here that CGP Grey did where he talks about why the plague only went from Europe to the Americas and not the other way around. It's actually really fascinating. So victims of smallpox would start things off with fever and headaches and sweating and a rash that eventually turns into pustules all over your body. These pustules manage to do a couple of things. One is spread it to other people very easily and open up your body to infections that came in and wiped you out. This is an old thing, we've talked about this already. Although apparently there was a type of smallpox called sledgehammer smallpox that just caused you to bleed out of all of your sores. Pretty. And it wasn't just poor peasants that were affected. In the 17th and 18th centuries, it killed several reigning European monarchs, including the Habsburg Emperor Joseph I, Queen Mary II of England, Tsar Peter II of Russia, and King Louis XV of France, as well as an Ethiopian king, a Chinese emperor, and two Japanese emperors. Turns out no one was immune to smallpox, except milkmaids. In 1796, while smallpox was literally killing off 20% of the European population, a physician named Edward Jenner noticed that milkmaids who had come down with cowpox, which is a much milder form of pox, were immune to smallpox. And he wondered why. So he had this theory that if you could infect somebody with cowpox, they would be inoculated against smallpox. So he tested this out on his gardener's son. He got some pustule pus from a milkmaid that had cowpox and injected it into his arm and gave him a little bit of cowpox. 
he had a very trusting gardener. Of course, he had to test whether or not the kid was immune to smallpox after the cowpox worked through his system, so he took this kid and exposed him to smallpox over and over again. Who is this gardener? But luckily for the world, and especially for that kid, it worked. He didn't get smallpox, and it proved that getting cowpox could inoculate you against smallpox. So he named it a vaccination. Vaca actually is the Italian word for cow. So once this was proven to work, countries around the world began to mandate smallpox vaccinations to their populations, and it eventually completely wiped out the disease. In 1980, it was declared officially eradicated by the UN. So thanks to technology and vaccinations, the worst killer in all of human history has been contained. Go science. Now there's actually a debate going on today because smallpox only exists in two labs around the world, one in Atlanta and one in Moscow. And there are people debating whether or not we should kill those samples and just completely get rid of it altogether, while others say maybe we should hang on to it so that we can test it and be able to deal with it should smallpox ever come back. But then there's always that worry that it could be weaponized. It wouldn't be the first time smallpox was used against populations to kill them off. It was certainly done in the Americas. But how ironic is it that we're talking about weaponizing smallpox, which is exactly how we wiped out the aliens in War of the Worlds. How's that for wrapping things up in a bow? Anyway, fascinating stuff. I'll put some links down in the description for you to go check out and learn more about this. Be glad you live when you do, people. Hey, if you like my shirt and you like the channel and you want to represent out on the street, we have these available on uh, my website on the store, answerswithjoe.com slash shirts. There's this and all kinds of fun and nerdy, geeky uh, t-shirts that I wear out in public and get comments on them all the time. So I think you will too. Go check it out, answerswithjoe.com slash shirts. Please like and share this video if you liked it. And if it's your first time here, please check out some of my other videos. You might like those too. And if you do, hit subscribe. You'll be one of the first people to see them when they come out every Monday and Thursday. With that, I bid you adieu. Thank you so much for watching. You guys go out, have an eye-opening rest of the week, and I'll see you on Monday. Love you guys. Take care.